I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Indigenous people of all the lands that we are on today. While we meet today in a virtual platform, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands, which we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and improving our own understanding of local Indigenous people and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nation people who call this land home. I just want to take a moment to remind everybody that not all exercises are suitable for everyone, and you must go at your own pace. If you have any sort of chronic disease or recurring conditions, we do ask that you consult your physician before doing any kind of exercise programs, whether it's ours or anyone else's. This should not be a substitute for professional advice or treatment. And I just want you, everybody to realize you go at your own pace. And if you're feeling any dizziness or uncomfortable, please, please stop what you're doing and have a seat. And do not push yourself past your own limitations. Now, Devin is a massage therapist and movement educator with more than 20 years of experience in yoga, martial arts, natural movement fitness, and many other weird and wonderful practices. He loves to work with beginners and seniors, and he's with us right now. Hello, Devin. Devin? Devin, hello. Oh, and I muted you. Sorry, sorry about that. And zebras. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> good morning, beautiful people. How are you doing today? It's Tuesday morning, which means it's time for the joy of movement. Yay! Let's move. Let's have a good time. Let's smile. Let's love life. Let's love our bodies. Let's love all the myriad things that our bodies can do as they conspire to move through space and time. Ooh, there's so many things that we can do. And sometimes we focus too much on complaining about the things our bodies can't do. But even whatever you feel like you can't do, it's a lot of things that you can do. And even standing perfectly still, your body is fulfilling thousands of functions of metabolism and biology. So let's give our bodies the credit that they deserve. And speaking of limitations, I always say, respect your limitations, but don't be defined by them. Ooh, what does that mean? Well, we have to respect your limitations. If there's something you can't do, attempting to do it is just foolish, <clears throat> right? So you find out what you can and can't do, and when you do, figure out what you can't do, don't make yourself crazy trying to do it until you can do it. So that's where the not being defined by them thing comes into play. Because every day is a different day, and maybe something that you can't do today, you will be able to do tomorrow. And so all we can really do is have a look, see what's going on, and decide for ourselves whether we can or can't do it. How about that? Okay, so, joy and movement, here we are, the basics. Do it as you wish to do it. You need to modify something, modify it. If something doesn't seem right for you, skip it, do something different. If you need to take a break, you take a break for whatever reason, that's up to you. Um, what else? We don't push through pain, we don't push through injury. Pain is something that you feel this sharp, sudden, or growing uh, thing. It's more than three or four out of 10 in terms of discomfort. Anything else might just be discomfort. I'm today. Meaning a little bit of, do do do, everything good? I heard some voices. Anyways, it could just mean a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of an effort. It's discomfort, it means you're working, that's okay. If we can tell the difference between the do, we're doing really well. Okay, folks, so for today, what we're going to need is a couple of props, okay? Everybody's going to have something that they'll be able to use, all right? But I need two different things from you. All right, let me show you what the sort of, like, prototypical things are, and then I'll show you options that you could use in, instead of them, except I've just lost one of mine, so I don't know where it got to. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Uh, give me two seconds. <laughs> Aha. Here we go. So the problem is I was running around playing with my props and then I put it down in the wrong place. All right, so if you have these things, use them. One is the yoga block, okay? And the other is an elastic of some kind. They call them resistance bands. So if you have those, use those. If you don't have them, it's okay because I'll show you options. This just needs to be something about the width of your shoulders and a little bit less than that maybe that when you press on it from both sides won't break. Okay, and it will uh, not squish, so it's going to keep your hands apart if you try to press on it. What could that be? Could be a box. I've got this box around the house, a shoe box, some kind of a box. My mother classically uses a colander. That works just fine. If you have a good thick book, 
something like this or even a thinner book as long as it won't bend when you press on it that works just fine anything of that sort is perfectly okay if you've got a ball like this one uh, this is thin. you got a ball like this one here around the house that works great anything like that a tube a foam roller I'm going through this at length because guys we I this class is one that I do redo about once every six weeks or so because it's an important one so a foam roller works well too you'll have something now before you run off and look for the thing let me show you the other thing um, the elastic you could replace it with a belt like this something that you can stretch the important thing here is it should be at least the length between your shoulder and your hand and when you pull on it, it doesn't break it gives you some resistance or it could be completely firm that's all good the other thing you could even use is i've got this shirt a long sleeve shirt and i just roll it up like that and i can use that you could use a pair of pants use the legs something so go ahead and take a few moments a minute or two and go and see what you can find if you can't find anything at all you'll still be able to do something but having those tools will really be helpful. And then keep in mind those tools because we will come back to them. Terrific. Ah, all right. So many people, it's hard to keep track. And by the way, yes, welcome to all the new people. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of new folks today. Looks like most people have got their video off. So I'm missing seeing your beautiful faces. But just know that we're all here together, whether I can see you or not. Very good. There is the chat window. So if you have something pressing you want to talk about, you can go ahead and throw it in the chat window. I'll try to get to you if there's uh, enough time to go and chat with everybody. Just a quick back and forth. And if you're in some kind of trouble, you can always wave and we'll try to do our best to help you out. You could do this whole thing in your chair because we're working today mostly on the shoulders so if you want to do it in the chair you can if you want a little bit more movement you could stand and even move around as you do some of this stuff but we will be focusing mostly on the shoulders as again i say that we usually about every six weeks or so we come back to some version of this because the shoulders are so darn important yeah and so many of us have issues with their shoulders and i see it all the time so have most of us got our props maybe a quick hands up if you got your props can't use left hand due to heal broken arms. Yep, that's a bit trickier, but do your best. Do your best, use the one arm that you have and try to follow along. That will be good, okay? Some of the stuff you'll be able to do with just one side. The rest, you may have to be a little bit creative. <laughs> we do our best to cover everybody occasionally, but we're not able to do everything for everyone. Good, all right. Let us begin. So today we're going to be working on the shoulders. A few things. Because it came up last week, the issue of setting the shoulders or getting our shoulders into a better position. So we're going to do a bunch of stuff to take us to that place of setting our shoulders. So I just a little bit of chit chat about what that actually means, right? I'm going to stand sideways to give you an idea. Now you can see this point here. That's the front of my shoulder. Okay. So the question is, where should that be sitting? Well, now there's a sort of anatomically neutral for that shoulder. But for most of us, it tends to sit kind of like this, forward and a little bit up, which is not an ideal place for it. And if you see my two shoulders, you probably see that one does not look as relaxed and comfortable as this one does, which is a more normal set position. My left shoulder is always the one I have to work with more, but it's gotten forward and a little bit up. So what I'd like to do with it is bring it back a little bit, rotate it so that it sits down more, and then I get into this more anatomically neutral position for you. So what you could do just now to get a feel for that is bring your shoulders as far forward as you can and really stretch out the space in your back and then keep them forward as you squish upwards towards your ears and in a second my face will disappear because I'm so squished, right? And then I want you to try bringing them back as far as you can but still up, okay? And then slide down and that will start getting you there, okay? And then forward and up and back and down and now there's one more piece it's going to make it easier for you to set your arms if you i've stepped back a little farther if you open your arms out like this yeah and then imagine dropping the shoulders down you're going to see that automatically my shoulders start to fall back into a better place 
Unfortunately, most of our time is spent in this position, <laughs> whether we're using a computer or phone, laptop, tablet, reading a book, reading a newspaper, doing about most of the things we do in our lives. We seldom are doing stuff that have us walking around in this position. Okay, so we're going to try to do some exercises that will encourage that opening that you can have the good shoulder position without necessarily being in this sort of, uh, you know, standing on the front of the Titanic position. And, ah, I'm the king of the world. So just think the shoulder should be in the king of the world position. So the first thing we're going to do, take hold of your elastic or your whatever you're using for the elastic. And it needs to be wider than your chest. And again, it should be the length from your shoulder to your hand at least, and probably a little more if your shoulders are stiffer, okay? Very important not to work through injuries and pain here because many of you will have injuries in your shoulders. In fact, I would bet at least three quarters have some kind of injury in the shoulder is my guess, at least. I know I don't have any injuries, but I got a few things, all right. So what I want you to do with this is just get it to a length where it's just slightly larger than your shoulder width. And the shoulder width will be where your hands are directly in front of your elbows if you hang your elbows at the side. So it should go out a little bit farther than that, okay? I want you to imagine you have an orange underneath each armpit. So that will make your elbows come out just a touch. Yeah, they're not poking out like this at all. It's just as if there's a piece of fruit underneath each um, armpit, and then you can make a smoothie by doing that, okay? So that's the idea, just to make the elbows float a little bit. Now what you're gonna do is pull against that band only enough to wake up the shoulders. And I want you to see that that actually allows you to drop the shoulders back and draw them in towards the shoulder blades, okay? And then relax there. What we're looking for is not a big muscle thing, but an awakening of the shoulders that they want to just sit in the right position. Okay, that's what this will allow you to do. So it should be enough resistance that your shoulders wake up, okay? The second piece that's important for today that's going to be very difficult, but try it, is to keep the chest from puffing up like a proud peacock, all right? Because most often when we try to get our shoulders into the right position, 99% of people will stick their chest up like a proud peacock. That's actually counterproductive. That's concealing the issue rather than resolving it, and it'll cause the shoulders to get stiffer over time, right? Because when you actually go into a neutral position, you'll find yourself suddenly like this, because all of this has adjusted to being in a puffed up position. So let's try this. Float the elbows like there's a piece of fruit underneath each armpit. The band is a little bit more than the chest width. You float the elbows, you pull out and imagine your shoulders pulling right into the center, not back, not forward, but right into the center, and then relax your chest down. Oh, okay, showing you my bad shoulder. You see the difference between my two shoulders, at least I do now. Uh, <laughs> it's called a reality check. I'm working hard on my left shoulder. It's not quite there yet and then relax. Did you feel that, what happened? It's hard work, right? Who would have thought just doing that one simple movement would be so much work? But since we're used to our shoulders being in a poor position, getting it to a better position is a lot of work, okay? So, don't pull the band a lot when we do this. Just do it a little bit, all right? And now we're gonna do our rolls again, okay? So we roll forward, up. You're still pulling on the band, you're still floating the elbows, and you're going to make sure that chest doesn't come up puffing up. So we're not trying to do this movement, right? That chest stays heavy, yeah, and we're just moving our shoulders. Folks, if you do this correctly, it's really tiring, right? And I want you to think as we do our exercise today, anytime your arms start to feel really heavy and burning and tired, then you take a little break. Good, let's do that right now. Take a little shake and break. <laughs> I just made that up. I've copyrighted that. Take a shake and break and shake it out until some of that achiness and that heat and that burning sensation starts to go down. Right, that'll let you jump right back in. 
doing the good work that we're doing. Let's set aside the band for now. We will come back to it later. But as we carry on, I want you to try to go back to that feeling you had in your shoulders. And you might still have a little residue of that feeling right now as you imagine that you're pulling the band. Now you don't have to pull the band, just imagine it. Imagine that your arm is pulling out like this and the shoulders are settling right back. And that gives you a really nice starting position for the stuff that we're about to do. Okay. And what are we about to do? Let's start with something simple. Take the left hand underneath the right elbow. Feel that your shoulders are pulled into a good position. And now you're going to open the palm forward as if you're handing somebody something and you're going to fish it underneath and turn the palm up the other way. The thumb is pointing outwards now, but from underneath. <laughs> They're both pointing outwards, but one is underneath and one is on top. Good, nice and slow. But notice what's happening in your shoulders. Try to notice if your chest is wanting to puff up and drop it back down, because it'll happen here too. Okay, over and under. Pull the shoulders in, nice. Go to the other side, over and under. Beautiful. Nice smooth movement, go right to the end that you're able to do based on your own body, okay? As far as your shoulder and your elbow are willing to commit today. Good, relax that, shake it out a little bit. Let's do our swimmers. This is a really good one, but we'll try to really focus on good shoulders here. Now, what will good shoulders look like? Well, first of all, the chest needs to stay sunk. We don't wanna lift our chest up when we do this. We wanna stay sunk. And our shoulders should be heavy and downwards. So you start with that same feeling you had with the band, yeah, pulling the shoulders in. Then you touch your breastbone with the two fingers or two sets of fingers. We're gonna turn the palms forward without shifting our shoulders. And then we're gonna open as far as we can go. Yeah, when I say as far as we can go, each and every one of you, and there's more than 50 people here, will go to different places. You have to respect your limits. And at the same time, each time you do each exercise, those limits might change a little bit, okay? So be open to the changes, but don't necessarily push past anything that's painful or even uncomfortable. You do what you have to do today, okay? So we're trying to keep our shoulders heavy so they don't wanna scrunch up towards the ears, right? Again, if you do this really well, it's a lot of work. So we wanna keep breathing in and out through our abdomen, yeah? Diaphragmatic breathing. Good. Yes. There's a feeling that the shoulders are still pulling in, right? So they don't want to sag forward when we do this, okay? And they don't want to pull back when we do this. It's a different exercise if we start doing this. We're trying to keep our shoulders right in the middle. That's actually kind of tough. Breathe. Smile inwardly or outwardly, your choice. And then we relax. A little bit of a, just a random moving all over the place because we've been pulling those shoulders in and they might need to relax a little bit. As you start to change your body, you will feel tired because when we move things into a different position, we use our muscles very differently. And what used to be really easy will become very tiring. So respect that and every now and then shake it, wiggle it out, loosen it up. Okay, we'll bring our arms out into a T-shape now. This is where I like to pretend I'm pushing the sides of the screen as if I'm going to bend your screen. <laughs> right like that, all right? So wherever you is, make sure you have some space. As I come this way, you're going to notice I'm trying to keep my hands pretty much right in the middle of my body as if I'm between two panes of glass. And I'm going to have that same feeling of keeping my shoulder blades active. I'm going to turn one palm up and the other one goes down. Yeah, so do the best you can. When I say I'm turning one palm up, guys, I'm not doing it from the elbow. I'm doing it from deep inside of my shoulder. Yeah, the place where it's going to be the most difficult. I always like to make things difficult <laughs> for people, but it's only because it'll make things easier for you later on, okay? Respect what you've got. If you need to have the arms lower to do this, because for some people there's impingement and things are squished up into the shoulder blades, you do that. You do it down here, you can do it down here. 
it's okay. Either way, you'll still get a good result, okay? And it won't necessarily um, aggravate or annoy any injuries that might be there. If you can go up higher, go up higher. Let's give that a little rest because my arms are already getting tired. So as soon as you feel that burning heavy sensation, take a little break, shake things out, come back to that nice shoulder position that we talked about earlier, okay? And then we'll continue moving. Let's do the same thing, but now we're gonna let our whole body move. This is a bit of a freer movement, all right? So think about the shoulders, getting nice and well positioned. Drop your chest, let it be heavy. We come up here, and now let's let our whole body move with our shoulders, okay? Imagine though it's still coming from the shoulders, right? Even though this is moving, it's my arms that move and it's going to cause my chest to move. It's gonna cause my abdomen to move and even my hips. And you can take this as far as you want. You can start to explore and get creative or you can make it more subtle. That's fine, it's up to you. Feel what your body likes. Is there an opening there that your body would really enjoy doing? Is there some place where you feel stuck? Go ahead and work there. Oh my goodness, my arms is tired today. <laughs> so all that eating at Easter just really wore my shoulders out. Fork after fork. It was grueling. <laughs> I'm on a liquid food diet now. I'm so tired from fe feeding myself. All right, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay. Shake it out a little bit because the next few ones will be also a little bit fatiguing for the shoulders. I'll warn you guys, you're going to feel your shoulders tomorrow. I'm almost certain of it. And if you're worried about that and it's too much, feel free to take it a little bit easier. But it's going to give you some good results if you stick with it. And come on back to this class later on down the road in the library if you want to keep working with some of the things we do today. All right. Again, last time here in this position, we're going to do the Canada Goose version where we flap our arms. The movement is very small. It gets more difficult the smaller you make it, okay? Why? We have to stop and start the movement over and over again very quickly. It's a very good way to warm your shoulders up. Remember, the movement's not coming from your wrists. It's from here. This is where it is. Yes, that's an improvement. I see some people picked up on that right away. Same thing, guys. If you have a hard time bringing your arm all the way up, you can do the same exercise down here or even all the way at the sides. You take your version, guys. Okay, just because I'm doing it up here doesn't mean you got to do it up there. You find the version, but the thing is small movements and very quickly it gets fatiguing and burning. And as soon as that happens, you just relax and let it go. Okay, and if you're practicing at home, you could do several sets like that. You go back as soon as you've recovered from that little bit of acid that's building up in the shoulders from those quick little movements. Now we're going to do the same thing straight in front of ourselves like so. Get your shoulders into a nice spot so they shouldn't be hunched forward, nor should they be squished way back. Somewhere right in the middle like we had when we were using our band. Okay, and then we come forward in our zombie walk position and it's a flutter. This is like a flutter board, what you would do with your legs. We do it with our arms here. And again, it's not a wrist movement. It's coming right from the depth of the shoulders, which will be quite a challenge. I know, I've done this often. Very good. A funny little thing that's very powerful for the shoulders. My favorite thing is funny little things that don't look difficult until you actually do them. And then you're suddenly surprised. Good. And shake it out and relax. Very nice. Okay. We'll do the same thing, but overhead. You won't be able to see all my arms because I have these big gorilla arms and I uh, don't have enough space to show you the whole thing. But we'll come like this. And I want you to know, many people have trouble having their arms straight overhead. Don't do it if it's painful. Instead, let the arms angle forward. That's true for all of our exercises. But go to the height that you feel like you can do, okay? And uh, don't not do it just because it feels too hard. Just go in, take a break when you need to. And it's the same thing, forward and backwards. This is the particularly tiring one. Now, it's a, not only is it an awkward position for the shoulders, but our blood has to push upwards to provide oxygen and it's a lot more work for the muscles and they get fatigued faster there. So as soon as you start to feel that heat and that tiredness build up, you just let it go, shake it out, throw it out, relax it, let it go right into the ground and compost and become some nice broccoli for tomorrow's salad or whatever. Okay, just let it go, let it go. 
and we go into our next exercise. All right, back to the shoulders. This is what we go back to. Think about going with the elastic again. The chest relaxes, the shoulders pull out and in as if we had our elastic there. Good, and we start there. The shoulders will stay in that position, but now we're gonna reach up and we'll throw our arms back as we put a slight bend in the knee, if you're standing. And when you throw your arms back, you'll hinge through the hips a little bit. Okay, so it'll look like this. You exhale, throw the arms back. Throw the arms back. Throw the arms back. You notice I'm keeping my shoulders centered even as I bring it back so that it doesn't wonk out of place. Okay, let's do it. Do it at your speed. I recommend you exhale with a little force as you go through. If that's okay for your breathing, it doesn't make you dizzy or anything else like that. Just add a little oomph to it. If it feels okay to bring the arms higher, you can do that. Good stuff. Now we're building up a little bit of heart rate, circulation, and so on. Good, little shake out, take a little bit of a break. You're doing great. Good work. Ha ha. Just to give our arms a little bit of a break, let's take our hands onto the hips. We'll do a few hip circles, loosen things up while your shoulders recover. Because we will go into more shoulder stuff. Don't you worry about it. There's some things that will be a little on the challenging side when we get our props in there. So let's take the break when we can <laughs> and go in the other direction. Yeah. We're letting the stores of energy in our shoulders build back up so that we're not pushing past our thresholds. We'll get back to it. Very nice. And just a little bit side to side, release, relax, relax your hips, relax your back. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Good. Let's review something we did from last week, which is, again, one of my favorite exercises having to do with the shoulder, which is our T-service exercise. Now, I'll go over it again. I know some people probably weren't there. You know it. You can jump right into it. But the idea is, imagine I have a hot teacup in my hand, and I don't want to flip it upside down, which would dump the tea. But I want to make two full circles with my shoulder. So here's how I do it with my right hand. I have the palm up, I point the fingers at my waist. Here I'm letting my elbow come out a little bit, but I don't want my shoulder to come really far forward. I wanna let that sink back. Then I'm gonna bring it all the way out to the side, which is usually the most challenging spot for it. Between here and here, things can get a little bit tight. So I will allow my body to move. Yeah. Then I'm gonna keep that half circle going until it's directly over the top of my head. The palm is still up. And I'm going to relax my shoulder back into that spot. And then I'm going to come around until my fingers are once again pointing at my waist. Let's do that whole thing on that side again. If you don't get it exactly as I do it, that's totally okay. You're doing your best. You're moving. You're getting some nice movement for the shoulder. And we're all very happy about that. So, and then each time we go back to it, you can improve just a little bit. And I see Veronica is bringing her arm so she can feel where her shoulder is. That's a great idea. You can actually take your other hand and notice what's happening to that shoulder blade as you move. That's kind of cool. Or your chest. Good. The important thing is we're really moving that shoulder joint through its full range of motion. And that's the best way to make sure that you don't lose range of motion in the shoulder. Unless you really go through it on a regular basis, you won't even notice when you start to lose it. Good. We'll do it one more time on that side. We'll switch to the other side. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side. Now the left hand. Let the elbow come up. Relax the shoulder. Point the fingers in towards the waist. And then here's where I see that this shoulder has more trouble. As soon as I bring it back here, it wants to roll forward and collapse. So I need to take a second and bring it back down. Let my whole body move so the joint has some, um, some relief. And then we bring it back. Two full circles in, out, over, back to the start. Very good. Yes.
Every now and then check in, see how your breathing is. We want you to have smooth breathing in and out into the diaphragm, which means you relax your belly. Let your belly move with your breathing, okay? And that will help you just feel the movement better, connect a little bit better the feeling of your body with your mind, which is all about making those neural connections that let us move better. Yeah, it's an awareness thing. Good. That's one there. Just for fun, try doing both at the same time if that works for you, okay? Both fingers in, both hands out, both over the head, both back to the beginning. You might hear a little bit of crackling noises. I do, because there's little bits of stuff and cartilage and tendon crunchiness and all that jazz. Remember the palms stay up the whole time. If, if Ideally, I could take a ball like this and the ball would not drop, except it does as I go over, but ideally that's how I would do it. <laughs> so we do our best. Okay, shake it up, that was great. Really nice stuff. We'll do things to add a little bit of juice to our shoulders in terms of getting some fresh oxygen and circulation there, which will help us do the strengthening we're about to do. Zero gravity uh, pull up. Huh? So the first one is in this plane, right? We have our arms out. We're going to start with the palms face down. And then as we bring the arms in right up to our ribs here, we flip the palms so it's up, okay? And I'm gonna try not to let my chest puff up when I bring the arms in. So it's gonna look like this, palms down to palms up. Palms down, two palms up, elbows are in nice and close to the sides. My chest is open, but it's not lifting. Good. Palm down, palm up. We're going to speed it up. Go at the speed that works for you. You can do it slower, faster. It's totally up to you. If you want to add some extra heat and energy to your shoulders, you pick up the speed like so. But remember to turn the palms up as they come in, which becomes a bit of a coordination exercise. Yeah, get the hands right in there close to your ribs. Beautiful, keep breathing in and out through the diaphragm. Nice smooth breaths, in and out through the nose if you can, depending on your stuff. Good, excellent. And then we relax that one, yeah. Very simple little things you can do to start. Your shoulders might start to feel a little tingly and a little warmer, which is great. We're gonna do the same thing over our heads as if we're doing a pull-up, okay? As if we're bringing a bar, or rather as if we're bringing our chest to a bar, but in this case, we're bringing an invisible bar to our chest, okay? So this is the gentlest way you can do a pull-up. But it counts. <laughs> you still count it as a pull-up. Yeah, use your mind and visualize pulling up, okay? So use the grip too, right? And when you grip, squeeze a little bit as if you really mean it, as if you're really holding onto a bar that you're pulling yourself up onto. Okay, it doesn't matter if you can or can't do it in uh, real life, let's say. Use your mind and visualize. There's power in that, all right? Once again, let's pick it up a little bit. Do it the speed you want. You can keep it there. And again, you can go at a different angle. If your shoulders don't like being straight overhead, that's fine. Challenge yourself a little bit, but respect your limits. Good. And let's go. We can do a thousand push-ups or pull-ups this way and you'll really impress your friends. What'd you do after you, oh, I just did a thousand pull-ups. No big deal. No big deal. Good. <sighs> Breathing, relaxing, but getting some power into your arms. Good, let's do just a few more and then relax. Okay, here comes the real work. Oh no. So get hold of your block, your book, your box, your colander, whatever it is you have, your ball. Again, it needs to just be something that separates your hands that will not collapse or break or squish or whatever. So anything like that is fine. If you absolutely don't have anything, 
You could even grab, I don't know, a few shirts and just squish them together. It doesn't matter. But if you absolutely don't have anything, you can do it by just putting your hands together. But you'll miss out on some of the fun. Okay. So, again, we're working with the same planes here, but I want you to get used to this position. Both hands flat on the side of the block. Separated. Perfect. And this is a bit opposite of what we did before, right? Where I want you to now press the sides of the block and then try to relax your shoulders down without puffing up your chest. Really nice. Keep a little bit of pressure there. You don't have to give it the most pressure that you have, just a little bit. And then you're gonna slowly straighten out your arms as if you're offering a beautiful gift to somebody. And then you're gonna bring it back. You're offering the gift of strength to yourself. So nice and slow. Keep the pressure. Keep breathing. Good. And back. Yeah. Actually, a rubber ball is kind of fun to do this because the rubber ball, you can actually squeeze and it gives you some, some feedback. But the, block, the yoga block is good too. You go as far forward as your body and your level of injury and other limitations allow. So that there's no pain, but there should be a feeling of effort here to be sure. Good. The shoulder blades don't come forward, just the arms. Good. Depending on how much you push, you could actually put a lot of weight there. This would be enough to build big muscles, although it's not the most exciting way to do it. You effectively have an unlimited amount of weight at the gym because that block won't collapse when you press on it. I could put hundreds of pounds of pressure on there and it will make my muscles pop up. And I will sweat. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> but you don't have to do that. You could just press gently. That would be fine. <laughs> okay. Good. Now we're going to go down to up and respect the range of motion in your shoulders. Like sometimes, as I say, I really want you to get that, that you don't have to have your arms up here. They can be over here. It's better that you get them straighter than you get them higher for now. Okay. And so the movement's going to be like this. We start in the same place. We're going to press the sides. We're going to pull our shoulders in so we look perfect in our posture. We're going to straighten the arms down like so to the chest. Keep the pressure. Then we're going to go up where you can go and then back to the center. Again, you get as much out of this as you put into it. All right. So you could literally take probably the strongest person that you've ever met and have them do this and push as hard as they can and they will get a complete workout out of it. You don't have to have weight in order to have strength. You just need resistance. So this is actually even enough resistance to help you with osteoporosis if you catch it at the right time. In your wrists especially. Yeah, this is strengthening your wrists as well. Good stuff guys, you're looking great. And down and release good now with the same object you should be able to grab the edges and pull a little bit all right and if you can't do that with that object what you could do is grab your strap or your belt and hold it close like this okay but otherwise you take the same object you have with the block it's easy you grasp the edges this is going to be good for your grip strength we'll do the same exercises there Starting at the chest like this, we pull, and then we're going to reach for it as we keep pulling. Good for the wrists, the fingers, the hands, as well as the shoulders, and then back toward yourself, nice and slow. If you use the band, hold it really close together so that it doesn't get out to here where we get into the next exercise we do. It should be close and back to the center. Keep the tension, relax and set the shoulders so that they don't start getting funny. Good. My elbows are down. They're right by my sides when I start. I'm not starting out here. I'm starting in here, which gives a better position for our shoulders. My elbows are hanging the whole time. Good. Even though it's a bit more difficult. Good. One more. And relax. The time is flying today, guys. We're having so much fun. All right. <laughs> okay. The same thing as we did the second time, except we're pulling on the edges of the block now. We pull the edges of the block. Set your shoulders. Relax your chest down, and then you go downwards. Keep the tension back here. Then you go upwards. You will feel 
your grip strength here. If it isn't the best, it'll feel like it's hard to hold on to that block. So you want to keep doing this. Build up that grip strength. Grip strength is used as a predictive test for longevity. Those who have the better grip strength tend to have a lower chance of all-cause mortality, early death, because it is an indicator of frailty. So let's not be frail, let's be anti-frail and work on their grip strength. Not only that, but if you lose your grip on things, that's when uh, injuries, falls, and other things can happen. Good, so this is one way you can work on that. Let's let that go for now. Put your block aside, we're gonna grab hold of our strap or you're using a long shirt or something, but it should be this length at least and probably a bit longer if possible from my one shoulder all the way out to my extended hand. Doesn't have to be the full length of your both arms, but about here. Okay, make sure you got that. If this is a difficult movement for you, what you need to do is go wider, okay? If you've got an elastic band that stretches, you should be all right. But if you've got something that doesn't stretch, make sure you can go a bit wider with it. And if it's really easy and boring, come closer. Here's what we do. Bring the arms out here. Actually, before we do that, let's go back to our setting exercise. So you grab hold of your thing, your thumbs are out. We're just going to float the shoulders, float the elbows like you had an orange underneath each armpit. And you'll pull gently against the strap so some tension builds up. And then try to relax your shoulders down into that position and relax your chest. Okay, good. Now, we'll switch our position on the elastic so the palms are down. And we'll bring it out to its sort of maximum width. Keep your shoulders as if they were in that nice position we just had them. And we're very slowly going to lift up to the top of our heads with as straight a set of arms as we can. Okay, so really try to get them straight. And if that's really hard, you need to maybe go a little wider with your thing. Okay, or use a lighter band if you have one. And let's bring it back down to the chest and we'll relax and rest that. Good. The next one, we're going to try to go all the way behind. Okay, don't push through pain. If you get a pinch there, you need to go wider or not go there just yet. All right. That pinch could mean a tendon or something else that's not doing too well. We don't want to push into that. Okay, but you push around it. Good. So we're coming up here. If there's no pain, you keep going. Try to keep your arms as straight as you can. And then continue behind the back, possibly all the way down to your hip or just behind your shoulders. And if you feel your elbows need to bend and all that kind of stuff, try to find something a little wider if it's possible, because it will make this easier to do. Okay. Having an elastic, by the way, guys, is one of the best simple pieces of equipment you can have. So, or even a set of two or three with different amounts of resistance. Because you can do so many great things with them. I can't even begin to tell you. So this is just one of the many things you could do. So it's not a bad thing to pick up next time you're at almost anywhere these days. You could buy this stuff. I think you get it at the Shoppers Drug Mart sometimes. I get mine at Winners usually. Uh, Canadian Tire, on Amazon, wherever you want to buy it, get yourself a resistance band or two, and I think you'll find that really useful. I use mine all the time, every day. Good. Looking good, guys. One more. Let's do it. Keep those shoulders strong. Ha, ha, ha. And then let's go ahead and set that down. Wonderful job, everybody. One more time, we'll do a little roll on the shoulders. So we'll squish it up, we'll squish it back, we'll squish it down, forward, up, back, down, forward, up, back, and then try to settle it in that nice spot in the middle. Imagine for a second, you're doing that exercise in this position and feel good and strong there. You will feel your chest open and expand and your shoulders settle into a strong position and slowly relax your arms in that nice strong position as if nothing had changed here, but only the elbows have changed. Take a few moments there. Relax, bend your knees a little bit. If you wish to, you could close your eyes and I want you to feel. Don't worry about what exactly is where and what this and that, the other thing. I just want you to feel 
what your shoulders are feeling right now. Aside from tired and maybe a bit sore, just feel where they are, feel the strength of that position and try to internalize it a little bit because you can eventually change them if you do this regularly and take the time to feel. Just a few breaths. And then you could try tucking the chin in just a little bit to feel a lengthening in your neck. Try to relax and soften your lower back, feeling everything nicely lined up with gravity. Reaching tall out of the top of the head, rooting down through the feet and the hips. Good work. That's our session for today. Well, you really did well there. Beautiful stuff. If you found anything interesting and useful, go back to the library and come on and do this again. And again, as I say, I usually go back to the shoulders about every six weeks or so, depending on what kind of challenges we're doing, but something like that. So we will get a chance to do everything over again. Okay. Thank you, Devin. That was great for the shoulders. <clears throat> I added some stuff for my legs so I don't get cramps. Good idea. I love it. Yes, please feel free to do that, folks. Modify as you need to. There's a little time for Q&A if people have questions or do you just want to share anything with the community. That's what we're here for as we move together. Yeah, I just wanted to say that those people that are new, Devin does do usually focuses on a different thing each session or each other session. And you'll see that they are marked in the library. Like sometimes they'll say legs, sometimes they'll say wrists, sometimes they'll say shoulders. So that you can back go back and do those different exercises if you're looking for some more focused training as well. So Devin, can I ask you when we move the shoulders, sometimes I hear like a little click. Is that okay? Is it doesn't anything? hurt. It just sometimes, but not all the time. There's like a little sound. <laughs> Uh, that that's certainly a common experience and most of the time it's the sound of a tendon passing over a bit of bone which it will do as you rotate your arm if it's not painful most of the time it's okay if it's not part of another you know a picture of an injury of some kind if it's happening a lot of course you can always get uh, someone to have a look at it a physiotherapist or what have you most of the time it's totally fine and believe me um you can't hear the sound of my shoulders but they're making a lot of noise as I'm doing it, partly because I work as a massage therapist, so I'm using my arms and shoulders all day long, every day. And so, uh, and then on Easter weekends, I'm using it for eat, feeding myself. So uh, they get a lot of work. Plus I play music, which also has uh, <laughs> its consequences. So a little bit of clicking and clack, clacking is, is usually okay. If it starts to hurt, or if it starts to block your range of motion, it's a good time to get it checked out. I put my email in there and Jen just, just copied my email on the chat. If yeah. you want to go ask me any questions. Thank you. I think happy to give general advice. Okay. I see Catherine's got her hand up. I can only see the first page right now. So I apologize. Yeah. Catherine, what can I do for you? Oop. Catherine, oh, are you unmuted? Unmute. Unmute. Gladys, it should be in the in the library at some point. Um, in the oh, after. there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my question: I find it really hard not to recruit my neck muscles when I'm doing, especially the block um, exercise you did. Do you have any tips for how to stop doing that? Yeah, it's a tough one. It happens to a lot of people. It's more of a habit than anything else. It's not necessary. Um, and it takes some time to break that habit. One of the things I usually recommend is just a little bit of a chin tuck. Because usually what happens is, is people do this. They want to, as the effort gets more, the neck starts to <laughs> get involved. So what you can do is try just, instead of thinking don't do that, try doing the opposite. So think about tucking the check, check the, this thing, the, <laughs> the chin into your neck, the check, <laughs> the chin neck. <laughs> So tuck your chin in a little bit like this. Think about pushing through the top of the head, elongating the back of the neck, and recruiting the back of the neck. So if I push like this, simultaneously think of that action. 
that might take a while. <laughs> Don't expect it to be. I'll but, work on it. Yeah, you can also take your exercise band for this one and using your exercise at the back band at the back of the head, practice the chin tuck like that. And just get used to that action happening with effort. And wow. that may help a little bit. Um, oh. <laughs> it's a tough one. I find like, it in my head too. Thanks. Says it in the neck. It's, no, I hear it all the time. Some people will strain their neck from doing a completely unrelated exercise. So that's the best advice I've ever had and it's worked fairly well. So I have Rita and I have Alfred. So I'm gonna just get Rita first because I saw Rita first and then Alfred will get, Is I don't know if it's Alfred, but I see the name Alfred there. So I apologize if you're not Alfred. <laughs> so Rita. Try to push the button. Yeah. yeah, unmuting. Usually if you push the space bar, if you have a laptop, that works. Okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm new to this session, uh, just started last week, and uh, I wanted to know how do you access the library? You said go to the library and access it and practice some more, and so how do I hey, access Rita? that? So hey, Rita, the same email that you use to get on this class, if you scroll yes. down, you'll see the, uh, those information about the library, and you can click on it, okay. and the password okay. is there as well, and then you can okay. browse all the past sessions. Okay, you thank you so that, much. Or you want something specific, just send me an email and I can send you the direct link. Okay, thank you, Jen. No problem. Okay. So Alfred slash, I'm not sure if you're Alfred, but you can correct me. <laughs> uh, make sure to unmute yourself. Hello? Hello, I hear you now. Uh, is that no, you? No, Alfred, you'll need to unmute uh, Alfred Van Ham. Nope, you're still not, you're still muted. This is the eternal problem. There you go. You're good. Okay, so um, it is Alfred and Tamara, <laughs> and I'm okay. the Tamara half. Ah, and Tamara. Okay. I'm, I love this. Um, how often a week do you suggest uh, this be done? I suggest start with three times a week. So give yourself a day off in between. Oh. Okay. And then it'll depend yeah. on your capacity. And if that feels really good and no problems, you can try increasing it's it. But, uh, and, but I would suggest is you pick out the ones that are the most useful for you and start mm -hmm. with those. And then you may at some point even be able to do them every day, taking a couple of days off every now and then. But that's, you have to start easy just to make sure you don't overdo it. So three times a week, give yourself a day off in between. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that type of thing. Great. Thank right. you Thanks so for joining. Lovely to have you. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a while before I remember everyone's name, but I'll do my best. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Veronica has her hands up there. Just a, a, an observation or, or, you know, when we were doing this with the shoulders back and not back, but sort of in the middle, it's like, you know, and then you switch to another exercise and then it's like, I think my shoulders are back. Or, or in the right position, but then I touch them and I realize they aren't. And it's like, that's the kind of thing, like the awareness that you help to bring. I thank you for that because I didn't realize that I wasn't even doing that, even though in my mind, I thought I was. So anyways, just want to point that out. Yeah, that's so exactly right. And that is the challenge with all of it is that awareness, the difference between our inner kinesthetic awareness and our external presentation. There's often a, a, a space between those two things. And the practice is really all about bridging that space. So that um, a good one for you would be to just do this exercise of setting with the band or even a, a rope uh, or anything like that and go to the mirror and stand sideways. Like I was a little alarmed when I saw myself doing it and going, oh man, I thought I was doing better than that. But you have to get past that and just sort of be okay that's all right that's fine um i have my tai chi teacher to thank a lot for this because he's really opened my eyes this way as well so having someone to give you feedback from the outside is is really world altering with these things what we think yeah. we're doing is not all often what we're actually doing unfortunately so we do our best yeah, yeah. And, zo and the thank zoom you. thing will show you your shoulders as well if you see yourself in the in the window your zoom window you yes. will see that your my shoulder. I thought my shirt was when I started doing the the virtual hikes. I thought my shirt was off. It turned out my shoulder was higher than the other one, and then so it's very yeah. disconcerting. I had no idea. 
Teach a Zoom class every week and you'll learn a lot about yourself. Learn a lot about your shoulders. Yep. You get to see yourself every week and go, hmm, <laughs> what the heck is that? Yeah. Karen's, Karen's iPad, I know you had your hand up. Yes, hi. I, hi, I'm, I'm really glad that I've joined in on this, but I have three frozen discs in, or fused discs in my neck. Mm -hmm. So there are certain ways that when you're doing the exercise, I can't, like, I can't bend down that way. So I just, I, I don't know if I should just continue doing just the arm, the shoulder and, and that, and just never mind trying to put my hand that way. Like I can't go over that way. So that's when I talk about uh, knowing your limitations, that's where we get into that field. Because I guarantee you, everybody here has something and diffuse this <laughs> are definitely a firm imposition on what you can do as right. much as you want to do things differently. I think most of what we've done should be okay, just because you're not needing to use your head. So when I say tuck your chin in, obviously yeah. only tuck it in the way that you can. Okay. Um, everyone's going to be di different. It's more to not let it stick out this way more than you have to. But diffuse okay. this, it, it'll be very individual how your case is. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I know it's it's... It's a real challenge and it's unfortunate that we all have these different things but at the same time i think it's amazing how we all can do things our own way and right. that we can have our own expressions of who we are and at different times of our life and so it's more about looking at what you can do than worrying too much about what you can't so if i ever okay. tell you to do something that you physically can't do please don't try okay <laughs> i'll say like try and tuck your chin in but if you can't ignore that Okay. <laughs> I'd love to be there one-on-one -on -one with everybody and then I'd be able to say that, you know, more succinctly, but I have yeah. to sort of generalize and say, be aware of, of what hard limitations there are okay. and then challenge everything else. Because yeah, today is my first day, so I'm just... <laughs> well, welcome boy. So you are Karen or... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm Karen. <laughs> okay, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Sometimes I don't know by uh, the names that show up, but uh, <laughs> I try my best. Okay, one more from Veronica, maybe, and then we'll go on our way until next week. I just want to say, like, when I came here, like, I know I have certain limitations. And I, I never explored them or pushed into them because you feel, oh, it's a limitation. But as you start doing the different exercises, you start realizing what you can do within that limitation, and you start building the confidence to do it and to accept that limitation and still go on with it you know and and i don't think we learn that from the medical system but we learn that from trying these things here you know so that's just what i've learned and i i feel so grateful that i can do certain things that i didn't even know i didn't even dare to explore because i just wasn't sure so i give a lot of thank you to the site here that's beautiful, Veronica. You you just defined what I am hoping to be able to help people do, because I've experienced the same for myself, and uh, I think there's not much as better in life than to realize that you can do more with your body and with movement than you ever thought possible. That's really a, a certain type of ultimate freedom, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm I'm loving to hear that from you, and that you're having that experience. It makes me real happy. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, and it's your work that got you there. Keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm just here to wave my pom-poms and cheer along. Thanks for the pom-poms and the guidance. You got it. <laughs> All right, my uh, wonderful people, we're gonna see you again in seven days, so take care of yourselves. And as right. Jen said, this will be in the library in the next 24 to 48 hours or so, if you wanna go back to it over the course of the week. And otherwise, we'll be on to something else next week. And I hope you have a wonderful there's, uh, un, there's hundreds of old Devon videos if you want to explore so them. <laughs> if you can't get enough of Devon, you can binge. Hey, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Devin okay, take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.